Welcome everybody. Today I'm here with Chris Rice and we're going to talk about Oracle Database Service for Azure, which is a new service that we launched for Azure customers to basically get the best Oracle experience. Um, welcome, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Karan. Why don't you describe a little bit, Chris, what the service does and uh, why it's supposed to be the best Oracle experience for Azure customers? Yeah, so the great thing is this is building upon what was already there with Interconnect. So with Interconnect, Customers could link their two clouds and the two clouds could talk to each other over networking. What we've done is we've taken that to the next level. <clears throat> so we've made a, a dedicated portal that is very Azure friendly. So someone coming from the Azure side of the house doesn't have to relearn an alternate clouds lingo. We've mapped uh, an Azure VNet, an OCI VCN. They're both the software defined network. We've kind of lowered that impedance so people can get up to speed faster. And then we went above and beyond networking to where we're actually plumbing things like metrics back and forth. So from the Azure side, you can have a single pane of glass for monitoring your entire stack of your application across clouds. Right. So truly, we've done like platform level integration, network integration, um, identity integration. So I can see in this portal that you've actually logged in using your Azure credentials, right? That's right. So uh, you'll be able to come into this portal we built with your AD, AZ, uh, Azure Active Directory credentials, you log in and in this single console, we're actually operating against both clouds control planes. So now do I need to have an OCI account to, to, to do this? I'm guessing I do, right? You do, however, even for people that don't have an OCI account yet, there's a streamlined experience that I believe gets you an OCI account within five to seven minutes. That's pretty cool, so really, you know, this experience obfuscates sort of the connection of the two different accounts from the Azure side, from the OCI side, and it gives you that singular experience to be able to manage the database resources. Correct, because a lot of the feedback we got is in general, multi-cloud is hard. Um, you have to be an expert on both sides and what we're doing is we're making it easier for that person and auto wiring as much as possible to make it easy. Right. And generally, multi-cloud in the past, really for customers, what it really meant was great, I run some workloads in one cloud and other workloads in another clouds. That was kind of like, you know, kind of like a band-aid version of like a multi-cloud. But really, truly multi-cloud by, by multi-cloud, what we mean here is you're truly running an application and the app stack in two different clouds um, and, and sort of you know, using it like it was one cloud. You don't have to worry about latency or cost or anything like that. Yes. Yeah. A lot of the workloads today, either they were isolated in each cloud and a customer was multi-cloud because they happen to be using two clouds. They definitely did not go down and the majority of use cases are not using multi-clouds for a singular workload. Right. Right. So why don't we, yeah, why don't we just go through the portal, actually, the experience. Um, I, you know, I spent some time in Microsoft before and I've used Azure. So this clearly looks and feels at least like Azure. Um, or Azure-like. Uh, so why don't you walk us through this portal and the experience? Absolutely. So what we've done uh, for anyone that knows Azure, this should be very friendly, very familiar. So we took all the usability patterns from Azure from the, the homepage all the way down. So creating an autonomous database, for example, all you have to do is click on the autonomous, just like in the Azure portal itself, you get a list of the autonomous databases we've already created. If we go through the create flows for anyone that's been in OCI. And before know, you move on, Chris, I yeah. can also see the nomenclature uh, being being very, very familiar. So like the same region types, we're using things like subscriptions and resource IDs. And so very, very, very familiar to, for, for Azure customers as, as they've been sort of interacting with, the, with Azure resources. Yes, because in OCI, we don't have a concept of US East. We have Ashburn, we have Phoenix. We have more uh, more granular regionality to our data centers. In right. Azure, they're used to US East, somewhere in US East. They also have concept of subscriptions. We do not have that concept. So everything we're doing is inside these constructs of Azure. Great. So how do we create something? So the create flow also is very Azure-like. We're going into the normal wizard, wizard uh, path that people are used to. We're querying the resource group, which is the Azure resource group to put things in. We give things a name and we just walk through the configuration. We're gonna pick a workload type of analytical or uh, transaction processing. We have multiple flavors of our autonomous database. 
database. And so just for the audience as well, right? So autonomous databases are fully managed database service, essentially that automates the patching, the security aspects, et cetera, kind of basically gives you a single plane of glass for, for, for Oracle database, right? Correct. So uh, with database, with Oracle Cloud offerings, we have multiple flavors of Oracle database. I'll say autonomous database is our Cadillac, right? It is the, the best one out there. It handles all patching, all availability. The database is just up. It's running. You don't have to worry about it. It's always patched. And then there's other flavors, for example, and we can walk into it, but there's a database on a VM or there's our highly specialized hardware, which is Exadata, which is for extreme processing. Gotcha. And that's, I think, I think to a lot of Oracle customers, a lot of these things will be familiar, obviously. Correct. Okay. So, so, so we're selecting workload type, database details. Yeah. So, and then uh, you can get these things in multiple sizes. We can do auto scalings, very cloud native type features. We're going to say we want it networking wise available everywhere. So Chris, just to also double check, this is an important part. Um, you know, we're actually taking care of the networking stack under the covers. So in the past, customers would have to actually manage to interconnect themselves. In, in this new uh, world, I guess, we're doing it on behalf of them. There's obviously no data costs, but also we're peering the two network, the virtual networks together. Is that right? That's right. So we are actually creating the VCN on the Oracle side and peering it to a VNet on the Azure side over the interconnect. So we're taking care of all the plumbing to ensure that the network is reachable from Azure as if it was natively local in that VNet. Perfect. And, you know, a lot of people also talk about latency and, you know, our measured latencies in the interconnect regions is actually pretty good. In some cases, we're seeing latencies that are rivaling or bettering, uh, you know, Azure's own uh, uh, availability zone latencies or inter uh, availability zone latencies. So, you know, for most applications, 99% of the applications, we're actually going to see, uh, you know, sub two millisecond latency across across the two regions, which will be really, really awesome for customers. Correct. Because the latencies are key on database applications. As the more data, of course, goes across that interconnect, the more intolerant it becomes of higher latencies. So the fact we can have these nice low latencies is what's going to enable multi-cloud workloads. Gotcha. Security, tags. Tags, normal tags, so that you can have common tagging across the clouds for maybe correlating bills or correlating stacks back together. And that's it. And then in, I think, about four to six minutes, we'll have a brand new database that comes to life. Got it. And so this experience is obviously like no, no different to what a customer would do, let's say, if they were launching like a... A Cosmos DB, uh, you know, uh, from within Azure, it just gives them another experience to do so. Now, these resources are running in OCI, right? Correct. Um, and then, what are we doing on the Azure side? Like, how does this, all of this interact with Azure? So instead of waiting, let's go to an existing system. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an existing database. So if we look at an existing database, we actually have a number of things across the top here. The first mm -hmm. two are the most interesting. So in Oracle Cloud, we have a thing called database actions. That's your primary web interface for the database. You can load things, you can run your SQL, you can create REST reports, you can use your application express and build applications right included with the autonomous database. So all of those things are accessible to Azure customers. And then the very next button over is where we are going through and propagating the metrics that are created on the Oracle side and pushing them straight through to the Azure side. So we're using, again, the same credentials and everything to basically pop you over to the Azure portal, where essentially we've created a bunch of um, resources where we're pumping the logs through, right? Correct. And since the database is not on Azure, what we're using is we're using an application insight. And in there, we can attach metrics to this application insight in context of the database that we created. So there's one of these context, uh, sorry, one of these application insights created per database. And within that database, we'll be able to go down and actually see the metrics for that database, which would then allow me to make a single pane of glass over my application stack. Gotcha. And so what this actually truly means is, you know, you're able to access, obviously, the database through the connection strings. You can hook up your DNS to it. 
Um, and you can continue to do what you normally do on Azure, but with an Oracle database service being run and managed. Correct. And to your point about connection strings, we're also injecting other resources into Azure. So the other resource we're creating per database is a dashboard, a shared dashboard. So as that database goes through lifecycle operations, including creation, we will actually create and keep this dashboard up to date with the database connectivity, the strings, what the, the services are that are provided by the database. And we put those metrics right here on this dashboard so they're easily accessible for anyone without even going to our console. Right, right. So we've actually done the hard work of plumbing all this stuff together and essentially connecting the dots. That yeah. totally makes sense. So let's assume that there's issues. How do you actually uh, kick off the support? Like what happens? You know, how do I, how do I, how do I talk to support in terms of things going wrong on the database side or the app side? Is that experience also also similar, or or how does that work? Yes. So uh, two answers here. One is the reason we're doing the metrics is to hopefully help people help themselves, because then you can to a degree diagnose whether the Azure side or the Oracle side is having an issue because you have metrics from both sides. However, as you say, everyone has issues in the end of the day when production's on fire, everyone needs to know how to fix it. So what happens is we actually have a collaboration with Microsoft so that we open up collaborative tickets so that we can jointly work and try to figure out and resolve the issues as fast as possible. And then that can be accessed directly through this multi-cloud portal as well. Correct. So if we come back to our new portal, there's actually a support link right here. Okay. You can click and initiate that support interaction. And then you're also able to obviously look through your bill on, on the same portal. And then hopefully in the future, we'll have tons of new features that will allow you to actually manage multiple things across you know, Azure and, and OCI. So that's pretty cool. You know, XSCS is going to be there uh, with Rack, obviously. Um, you know, you're going to be able to launch Exadata, which is like you know, brand new. Um, obviously, you're going to get autonomous and base database. And really, what this opens up for customers is the ability for them to use their data that's sitting in the Oracle database service and attach it to a bunch of other complementary services across Azure, right? Whether it's Synapse or maybe they want to move the data out and run a Hadoop cluster or something like that. It really truly opens up that possibility. That's right. The power of this is really leveraging the best of both clouds. So customers very much use Power BI, for example, or Azure Synapse. Our goal is that those services work as natively with the Oracle database across the multi-cloud as a local database in Azure. That's great. And so really, truly, it's no different to what customers would do today, as I said earlier, you know, if they were using a local or a first class, you know, Azure service. And so truly, it's bringing Oracle database closer to complementary services on the Azure side. And I believe, I think people can sign up to this stuff for free with a free account and then launch an autonomous database. Uh, we actually have a really, really awesome, always free and free tier uh, for OCI customers. They can launch and get a bunch of services forever. Um, and that applies to this service. So you can actually just, if you're an Azure customer, you can come in, you can create an Oracle free account and, and you're gonna be able to go and use this stuff pretty, pretty easily in a couple of minutes. You can. In the autonomous database, you're allowed two databases for free under this free forever. And we have production customers doing very significant application workloads on free, knowing that if they ever reach an upper bound, they can cross over into the paid and get even more. Right, right. Cool. So very, very simple, super easy for Azure customers. There's an easy way to actually get going without actually having to pay us any money. Uh, and so, you know, I recommend everybody go check this out. Um, it's available today in the 11 regions that are interconnected. Um, and if you have any feedback, you can reach out to us anytime. Well, this is pretty exciting, Chris. I know we can talk about this all day, um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure people will get bored. Maybe, uh, maybe not. But uh, thanks for joining us today and we'll see you all next time. Excellent, thanks everybody.